Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at printing some Pet G uh, filament from Hatchbox. So, uh, been reading a lot on the internet about Pet G and, and uh, other filaments outside of ABS and PLA. So, uh, uh, as you might recall in the last uh, few episodes, we've been printing with uh, TPU. So, uh, this episode we're going to try PET G. So, this stuff prints a little bit hotter, so I'm going to experiment with it. One of the, the big things that I do with uh, uh, filament before I run it is I preheat the extruder to a certain temperature, then I load the filament in, and then what I do is I uh, manually feed it through and see how the viscosity or the resistances of the filament. So as we do this, um, you know, I mount the, put the filament up here, and uh, I'm going to tip the camera up so you can kind of see what's going on. So, so again, I, I've preheated this extruder to two, 250C, and then what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, cut off the bad piece, this is a new um, piece of filament. And then with this extruder on the Wanho, I try to get it as straight as possible to feed it into the tube. And uh, I got to push the old stuff out. So I'm getting the blue filament. I don't know if you can um, quite see this. I'm going to drop the camera down. A little bit and it pan up so sorry about the movement I'm gonna try to move it in a little bit closer uh, I'm gonna drop down a little bit more and pan up so as you can see I had some red PLA in there and now I'm pushing through the the blue pet G and at 250 C that's giving me a lot of friction. So what I'm going to do is I am going to crank up the temperature a little bit. So I'm going to go to 255. It'll take a second for it to get up to temperature. Um, because what I kind of do is when I'm doing a new filament is see how it pushes through and if I get a lot of resistance, like this is giving, so let's see. I think you can see it. So this is kind of stringy, and this is kind of, um, yeah. I'm not liking how that's coming out of the extruder. It's still way too solid. So it's taking a lot of force to push through there, and it's not coming through too liquefied, so I'm at 255 right now. In part of it, you have to wonder, um, you know, how accurate the extruder temperature really is. So I'm going to take this up to 260 and see how it does. Because again, what I'm kind of looking for is, is the, vis, the viscosity or the force see if you can see my finger here the force, let me tip, tip this up a little bit because you don't need to see the bottom so the force that this gets fed through with so, so again if I take this, release this and I push and this takes a lot of force to push through so it is going through but it's not, it's not smooth and that's what you want to kind of feel or at least that's what I've had success with feeling kind of a, a smoothness to it. So it actually takes quite a bit of force, although at 260 I am getting a little bit better lay down than I had before. Again, you can kind of see it come out. I am going to go a little bit above 260.
Hmm. That's interesting. My one home won't let me go above 260. So, um, the filament on the, the uh, spool is rated for 240 to 260. So that this is at its upper end. I'm highly doubting that this is at a true 260. Is part of what I'm getting at. So, anyways, um, for this section of the video, uh, the biggest thing I wanted to show is that we're going to be working with Pet G. We'll be working with Pet G. It's up there, and basically loading it and how to kind of start guesstimating, um, basically temperature for this. So again, you can Google on the internet and things like that. Uh, but I like to do this test, so I'm going to run this at 260. I'm going to run a job, do a time lapse and we'll see how it comes out. Welcome back. So we finished the uh, the print on the Wanhao of the uh, camera slider piece, and as you can see, uh, basically it came took the tape up with it, but the tape actually peeled off very nicely, and it actually adhered uh, very well to the tape. Now I did run the heated bed at 90 degrees C. From what I've seen on the internet, you really don't need to run a heated bed. I'm going to try some some of this without the bed being heated, and we'll see how it does in a later video, but. Um, at 90C, this actually came out very nice, so um, no real issues with it. Uh, quite substantial part. Pretty um, pretty strong part. So here's a PLA version that I printed, and uh, the, the, the PET is definitely, uh, I think the PET-G is definitely a little bit more solid. Now, one of the interesting things I wanted to do was, was measure this. And uh don't know if you'll be able to see it, but if I measure the the PLA version, I come out with 53.03, and that's pretty close. I think it's actually 53.08 in the model. However, when I measured the PET G, I come up with 54.92. So I have seen some contraction in this, and I've also measured, you know, like comparing the center holes. So there, there is there is a slight bit of contraction in the PET G versus the PLA, which I'm a little bit surprised at. Um, I also printed at 260. I'm going to try in the next run dropping it down to two, uh, 255 because I think I might have been on a little bit of a hot side because I don't know if you can see some of this dithering where um, it, it filled in the honeycombs. Um, but that that could be just because uh, I think I used two shells on this one when I when I did it. Uh, however, it's very clear. I don't know if you can kind of see the the from the belt holes um, here and here that that you know those are definitely smaller also. So if, if you're going to design for Pet G, um, I definitely suggest scaling it up slightly. Uh, because the sizes will be a little bit less. But other than that, uh, it really came out nice. It did print very nice. Um, I actually like it better than ABS. I know I was reading on the internet as I put together the resource page for Pet G on the website, and I'll put the link below uh, to the resource page, that, uh, that a lot of people really like this a lot better than ABS. And, and I'm tending to have to agree. Um, again, I think I need to experiment a little bit more with temperature uh, but outside of that, I, I really like this material. It is definitely far more rigid and sustenant than um, the PLA version. So, again, I'll build out a, a, a similar version of, of this slider. And, and, and again, um, but I think this uh, this might actually make the course for uh, being worthy of production marketable grade uh, plastic over PLA or ABS. So I'm going to do some more testing. I'll do some more videos to keep you posted. But um, 
so far so pretty good on Pet G. I know I'd seen a number of people on the the internet have problems with it, but um, you know my first print actually went uh, very well. I might try doing some upscaling too uh, of this to see what happens and um, you know see how things work out with that. But uh, anyways, again, I did this at uh, hot end temperature of 260 C. Bed temperature of 90 on blue painter's tape, and it came out very nice, very happy with the output. I would probably give it a 9 out of 10, and I think probably the the only addition might be an extra layer um, to kind of fill out some of this, the kind of dimpling that I think you probably see here in the, in the camera uh, over the honeycombs. But outside of that, structurally, it's very, very solid. Um, so happy with it. So anyways, uh, look for more coming on, on Pet G. I'm going to do a couple more videos on it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Hey, subscribe to the channel. Uh, a lot more of this stuff coming. Um, been kind of busy at work lately, so uh, not as many videos as usual, but in, in a couple weeks I plan to kick out quite a few more because I have quite a few plans. And then also um, plan to launch my open slider project here, uh, which will be a whole other channel in project in itself probably in about a month. So stay tuned and again give it a thumbs up. Cheers!